Let's get started. Uh, bienvenue Observability Day. And that's... <clears throat> and, and to my wonderful and esteemed French colleagues, that is the last time I will butcher your language. So let's get started by thanking a few of our sponsors um, whose support is critical to put on events like this, um, which is now the fourth Observability Day, I believe. Uh, New Relic, Honeycomb.io, OpenSearch, and Grafana Labs also sponsoring. You can, yeah, yeah, no, give yourself a, give yourself a hand. Uh, you can check them out outside. Quick, couple quick words. Um, observability Day is really meant to kind of bring together all of these observability projects under the CNCF banner and let us share, you know, our successes and talk to each other about where we've been able to, you know, push forward um, in getting better observability, right? It's not a destination, it's a journey, um, as I like to say. The projects that you'll see represented here is everything from Prometheus, you know, the kind of the gold standard for metrics that's been around for so long, Jaeger, FluentD. Also, there's a lot about newer projects, such as OpenTelemetry, Thanos, um, and Cortex. This is the fourth iteration, as I said, of Observability Day. You know, this started as Open Observability Day in 2022 in Detroit. Um, last year in Amsterdam, this was one of the best attended uh, Colo events. We had another one in Chicago that was literally so full they were turning people away at the door. So this year in Paris, we were actually extremely fortunate to have not only some very large rooms, as you can see, but also two of them. And they're unfortunately on different floors. So I hope everyone brought their Fitbit because you'll be getting your steps in going between sessions. This is really a collaborative experience for all of us, not just speakers and presenters, not just chairs and program committee, but also all of you, right? People that are attending, people that um, work in this space. So when there's breaks, you know, say hi. Introduce yourself to other people. If you have a question for a speaker, you know, feel free. Speak. The, I can say as a speaker, the thing that I want to do the most is I want to talk to people, right? Like, I wouldn't, we wouldn't be up here otherwise. So please, you know, if you have a question, go up to a speaker, ask them. We're all very friendly. We don't bite, I promise. And remember, you know, we are all learning. Uh, there is never a point where your journey, learning journey stops. So you're, you're going to keep on going. A uh, quick note for speakers, you know, there are these mics up here. Also, if you'd like a lapel mic, you can find the AV people at the back of the room here or upstairs, and they will get you sorted. We have a ton of talks. I don't have time to go through them all in depth because we have quite a few um, project updates to get to. But please keep in mind when you're looking at the schedule, um, make sure you're in the right room because you're either here or you're up on 7.3. So you go to the left as you get off the escalators and it's um, right to your left actually when you go back into the room there. Finally, there's a you know, code of conduct. Um, you can scan this QR code to access and review the CNCF code of conduct. Generally, just remember the golden rule. Treat people as you would like to be treated and treat everyone with kindness and respect regardless of their background or anything else. Captioning and translation services are, um, sorry, captioning and translation services are available via Wordly on your personal device. You can scan this QR code, choose your language, uh, session ID will populate and select attend. Captioning begins when the session does. We will have refreshments, snacks, lunch available throughout the day in front of uh, the B and C rooms and then in, in front of the E and S rooms on level 7.3. There will also be a reception tonight uh, from 1730 to 1900 hours. Love to see you there. During lunch, we'll have some table topic signs so you can, you know, write, you know, hey, you want to talk about eBPF or you want to talk about, you know, profiling, then you can write a card, put it on your table, and have people come and sit and chat together. It's a fun way to make connections. Couple final notes here. There's a social media hashtag, uh, Ollie Day. Uh, virtual discussions in tag observability on the CNCF Slack. 
If you're a speaker, please try to be at AV five minutes before the start of your presentation. And at the back of each room, there's some stickers and other fun stuff. I already talked about that. Thank you to our program committee. Give them a round of applause. They are... They put a lot of work in. This is we ha this has some of the most talks submitted for any uh, Colo Day for any Day Zero event. Um, it's a really challenging job every year to go through and pick out the best talks for everyone. So, with that, let's move into our project updates. So, first off, we have Brian from Prometheus. Hello. Hello, thank you all for coming. Uh, so yeah, this is me. I work for Grafana Labs. And a quick update about Prometheus. Well, let me see who, who uses Prometheus. Uh, nearly. Who, who's never heard of Prometheus? Nobody. OK, so I'll skip the next four slides. No. Um, Prometheus is, is 10 years old. There's, there's a documentary about it. and. Um, we're still going strong, though. We did, we did eight releases in the last 12 months. Uh, so pretty steady cadence every six weeks we do a release. Um, there's also the long-term support version of Prometheus, if, if you're not aware of that. Uh, so if you don't want to take the absolute latest, we're, we're uh, updating that. Um, Prometheus is not just the monitoring program in the center. It's the whole ecosystem of... Uh, Alert Manager and exporters and clients and so forth. Uh, so we did a 1.0 release of the Java client. That, that's a pretty much a re-architecture of that. Uh, check it out if you are interested. Um, what else? I want to mention native histograms. They kind of we've been talking about this for a while, but they um, uh, they're nearly done. Um, so the, the point being, you, uh, traditional Prometheus his, histogram is very low resolution. It's kind of the blocky thing on the left. And uh, what we're calling native histograms are um, nearly infinite resolution, uh, much more fine-grained and more efficient. Um, so those are still declared experimental, but uh, pretty much ready to go. Um, so definitely take a look at that. Uh, Prometheus got smaller. I did a whole talk about this at the last observability day, so I just want to, again, if you've not been following, um, it is pretty much half the size it was two years ago. Uh, woo! Uh. <laughs> um, and one more slide. Uh, we are preparing a Prometheus 3.0. Uh, which is scheduled for PromCon, the Prometheus Conference, September time. Um, these are open telemetry is a big theme of Prometheus 3.0, uh, and I, I won't go into all the detail. We are holding a maintainer session uh, in the main conference on Thursday, Thursday afternoon. Um, we have a booth in the uh, main conference starting tomorrow. So if you want to talk about any of this detail, come along or uh, check us out on, online. That's my update. Thank you. And next we have Eduardo Silva from the Chronosphere these days. Yeah. It's, it's Chronosphere now. Talking about Fluent Bit. So. Thank you. Away. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Happy to see you here. And I'm glad to see how this conference is growing. Right? As uh, Austin was saying, we used to have just one room. Now we have two. Maybe next year, we have three or four. We're full pack. So let's talk about uh, the news of the project. Uh, I know that we have some, some users from FluentD, from FluentBit. So, and there's always some a little confusion about, hey, what is the project and how this works? Actually, FluentBit is a CNCF graduated project under the FluentD uh, umbrella. And as part of the problems that Fluent solved is uh, everybody what you face in observability or where you are trying to deploy applications. Deploy is like one of the steps, and the next one is to monitor what's going on in your environment. So how do you solve moving data from sources to destinations 
And that is with FluentD and FluentBet does. It sits in the middle as a way to connect different systems, different telemetry data, and also solve this problem, which is not just connectivity, also buffering, retries, scheduling, moving data at scale, it's a bit of challenge. And the way that it works is like you sit in the agent or any type of product in your environment, and then you connect to your own destination, your own vendors. This is fully, fully agnostic. But also when things get a, start to run in at scale, you need to have a way to deploy this in a very smart way where you might prioritize different things, like for example, do not lose data. Or I'm OK to lose data, but I need to move the data faster. Or I need to process the data before sending the data to the final destination, right? And when the, the agent, Fluent Beta and Fluent D, allows you to send this data to one or multiple places. Also, this is a common pattern architecture when you deploy um, Fluent or any type of tool that allows you to concentrate data. This is where what you're seeing in the graphic right now, in our world, used to be called an aggregator. It aggregates data from multiple endpoints before sending the data to the final destination. And one of the reasons for that to exist is because sometimes you want to control the data flow. Maybe if you have a 1,000 machines, you don't want the 1,000 machines sending data directly to your backend because it can blow up. And maybe you need something in the middle that control, validate the data schemas, and so on. And one of the values of Fluent is that also it has been extended not just to work with Fluent. It works with Prometheus by doing scraping with open telemetry, logs, metrics, and traces. So it becomes a, a real neutral way to connect different systems, right? Uh, when you go in production to any type of company today, you will find that you have data from syslog, from rollog, from Prometheus, from MySQL, and everything is a different format, different transport mechanism, and Fluent allows you to integrate those and solve your problem. As of today, FluentBit has been downloaded 13 billion times deployed on Kubernetes cluster. This is insane. If we do a checkpoint from one year ago, you know, we are 2x now. So um, that means more, more users, more bugs, more features, more improvements. So it's good to have this pressure to get this adoption at a production grade where now we need to go for the next big steps. And one of the big next, next steps is that this week we are releasing Fluent Bit uh, version 3. And I'm happy to hear that also Prometheus is hitting version 3. We should do a, a joint party from the same ecosystem. And one of the, the biggest thing of uh, B3, and maybe it's not a, a thing that the user will face, oh, now I'm using HTTP2. It doesn't matter, right? So you just want to deploy your application, making sure that you can connect stuff. But HTTP2 is, is a big deal to integrate system where if you are instrumenting your applications, for example, with open telemetry, and you want to rely on HTTP2, now Fluentbit will be able to collect data by using that type of transport. Also, we are doing a lot of uh, internal improvements for performance mostly, and how to facilitate the way that people can extend this agent when you are modifying the data, right? I don't know, we're not going to talk about internals, but basically when you receive data, you need to encode it, decode it, serialize it, and convert from different formats. And the most you will improve on that area, the best performance you get. And performance is not just a speed, it's also consume less CPU and less memory. We have chip a new processor. We have filters and processors. Processor, we chipped those in interfaces like a year ago, which allows you to modify in a more easy way the content of log and traces. And before, you had different plugins and as filters in Flow Embed to, do con uh, to modify the content. But now we're chipping a very easy way to just modify, insert, rename keys of logs and traces. And with different type of operations, even if you want to extract the content from a from a specific value with a regular expression, you can extract that and convert it to a key value pair, basically. If you are playing with metrics, sometimes we get users that say, hey, I don't want to all the metrics that is being collected. I would like to just exclude or include certain ones based on criteria, or prefix by names or regular expressions. So now we have a new processor for that uh, specific thing. And now we have chipping a new SQL processor. You will say, hey, SQL, are you running a database, Redis, 
no, no, Ray, sorry, <laughs> SQLite or something in FluentBit. No, basically, uh, our SQL processor allows you to select a specific content from a log, right, by using an expression with SQL query language, right? So you can select keys, rename them, you can put expressions, you can create conditionals, for example, for values, for strings. And in the next couple of iterations, we are going to ship aggregation functions. Right? Aggregation means like if you want to create a window of time, and in that window of time, you want to count what is the maximum value, the minimum value, and just start collecting the data that you really care about. The first problem that we solved at the beginning was connecting A to B. Then we had the next problem, which was processing. And now we are doing a high level where we are putting more logic for the user so you can have a, a smooth experience. And also, in, when talking to our open telemetry users, one of the biggest challenges that we found is like, for somebody who's connect, generating data from an NCK in open telemetry and sending the data in open telemetry format, it works fine. But most of our users, mostly coming from logs, they said, hey, I'm not instrumenting my applications, but I'm shipping data in different formats. How do I connect to open telemetry? And for them, we need to ship some solutions. So now our new open telemetry output connector has been improved in order to support more processing capabilities to adapt your own logs to the expected format by open telemetry. And as a final message, uh, we always do a big release of Fluentbit. We ship just a, also a new T-shirt. So on this T-shirt, we try to give it for free at KubeCon. So please, we will be around Observability Day. We have like 50 today, so make sure that you find us outside and you grab your T-shirt or also in KubeCon. So thank you so much. And I'm going to pass to Austin. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's get through some open telemetry updates real quick. Um, we're going to be pretty brief. We have a maintainer's track talk on Wednesday that will go into more depth on a lot of this stuff. But really, the three big new things in open telemetry we want to talk about uh, right now are continuous profiling, events, real user management, and then um, a lot of stability around core signals. So we recently merged OTEP 239, um, which brings in continuous profiles as a new signal to open telemetry. We expect an implementation this year. Um, there's some work happening with Elastic contributing some code there, which will dramatically accelerate it. We are also working really hard on stabilizing an event spec to uh, accelerate several different things, including real user monitoring, so a lot of improvements um, to the JavaScript libraries. This is going pretty well. We're expecting that around Q3. <clears throat> um, finally, you know, last year we announced like logs, metrics, traces were stable. Great. So what does that actually mean for you? Well, now it means that there's four languages where that's actually true. So that's <clears throat> been a long journey to get there. But we're also expecting Golang to follow this year, um, which I know means a lot to sort of the cloud native world. We're also working really hard to stabilize semantic conventions. Um, I know a lot of people have kind of dangling dependencies on those. Again, if you'd like to talk more about any of this, we will have a maintainer's track talk. And one more thing, we're applying for graduation. So if you're not familiar with the CNCF maturity levels, you have sandbox incubating graduation. We believe that the project has matured enough from a governance perspective, um, and it's in production worldwide. So it's time for us to kind of take that next step and move towards graduation. There will be some additional things about this, which again, you can learn more about at our maintainers track session on Wednesday. And we expect to conclude this by uh, KubeCon North America this fall. So, I don't know what the booth number for the observatory is, but it's the, the big thing that says Open Telemetry Observatory on it on the show floor. And please join our event channel on the CNCF Slack, Hotel KubeCon EU24, to get more info. Uh, next up, we have Jonah and Pavel. Talk about Jaeger. Keep it quick. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Paul. I work for Red Hat. Um, Jonah at Ivan. Nice to see everyone. Jump into a couple updates on Jaeger. Uh, yeah, so the main update is um, work around Jaeger v2. Uh, so we are planning to rebase Jaeger components on top of OpenTelemetry Collector, uh, which means that we want to essentially build another distribution of OpenTelemetry Collector with Jaeger components. Um, so all the storage layer will be implemented as uh, OpenTelemetry exporter. 
um, we will produce a single binary compared to you know all in one query and collector that we have right now. Um, and we would like to as well align the configuration for that with the collector so there won't be flags. It will be only the configuration file as we have it in the hotel collector. Um, and we still want to be compatible with the existing storage layer so we will be able to, um, to migrate to V1 without doing any migration on your database. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for those updates. And so a few other kind of new features that we've announced since uh, the last KubeCon. We fully support Elastic 8. Uh, that's something a lot of folks were asking for. Uh, we've also built a whole bunch of new capabilities in the UI. So if you haven't updated your Jaeger, definitely do so. It's a pretty easy update, and you start to get some of these new capabilities. And then uh, finally, on the roadmap side, uh, just kind of further taking what Pavel gave you an update on, uh, we're going to have a beta soon of V2. Uh, we're not on V3 like some of the other projects, but we've been very stable on our V1 for quite some time at Jaeger. The other thing that we're going to be releasing is native support for ClickHouse. Today it's a partially supported implementation, but a lot of folks using it. Uh, so come to either the booth, we're there in the afternoons, you'll see a Jaeger booth, or you can come to our maintainer session on Wednesday, I believe it's 12.10. Uh, so please stop by and we'll get into much more detail than this quick update. And uh, thanks very much. And there is as well Jaeger Country Fest on Friday if you would like to help out with the project. So hi, hello everyone. I'm Saswata Mukherjee. I work at Red Hat. Um, I work on monitoring platforms largely based around Thanos. Um, I'm a Thanos maintainer as well. And you can find me as at the Saswata M code pretty much uh, anywhere. So the Thanos community this past year was like super active. We had a bunch of new people, new contributors, new LFX mentees, um, even new maintainers. And we are very excited to share some of these major updates with you. Um, so starting with Querier, so this past year, there was a lot of focus on Thanos Querier. Um, so we released a version with distributed execution that you can enable with a query.mode flag. And essentially what this distributed execution does is that it has uh, functionality to split your queries and delegate them to either your leaf queries or even child queries. And as PromQL has mostly aggregation uh, operators, you can see how it would be largely beneficial because each query has to only process a uh, very little series as it goes up to the root. We also, um, for our new engine, we had a lot of progress. It now supports up to 95% of all PromQL expressions. So the Volcano engine has become a really nice and viable uh, alternative to the Prometheus engine in the context of Thanos. And we also introduced a native query tenancy model. So with HTTP headers, you can uh, request data for a particular tenant. And this can be paired with any sort of OSS authentication authorization mechanism to give you a very complete um, authentication plus tenancy model on the Thanos query, on the read path, basically. We also introduced a few changes in receive. Um, a major one is availability zone aware replication. So what this does is that it assigns uh, every single Thanos node in a hash ring to a particular AZ, and then data can get spread evenly across your region. And this just boosts your ingestion path SLOs, your disaster recovery scenarios, and so on and so forth. And there's a lot more. There's um, selective index caching for storage. There's TTL. There's lazy downloaded index header for storage. There's um, extended functions on the query and the query front end, even um, reloading using signals for the sidecar. And the Thanos community has been just super active. We've also had a lot of mentees that we've built projects with, like um, dynamic switching of engines on the query and explanation and analysis and so on. 
And finally, for the first time ever, we actually are uh, hosting ThanosCon at the CS KubeCon uh, Paris. It's on level 7.3, room E02, where we get into depth with a lot of these details. The Thanos community shares what they love about Thanos and how they're using it to build cool stuff. So definitely feel free to visit. We also have a kiosk, PP18A, I think, on the CNCF Project Pavilion. So if you have ideas about Thanos, if you're excited about its future, or if you just want to get involved, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Is Friedrich? Yeah. Just go quick. Yeah. Okay. So I'm uh, Friedrich Gonzalez. I'm a software engineer at Adobe. Um, I'm going to give you some Cortex updates. Uh, I could go, go around down uh, the Prometheus updates again because pretty much everything that has happened for Prometheus have, has happened for us since Cortex is, is, uh, is a pro project that uses Prometheus in its code base. But anyway, so we have not, we have not been lazy. We have not just been using uh, the good features from Prometheus and Thanos, but we also been adding some great new features in the last year. And, one of, and, and here we have some of them. I'm not going to go through all of them because of the time. Um, interesting is query priority, right? So we have a way to specify specific queries um, which uh, give higher priority. And well, that's, that's a lot of stuff there. We, uh, <laughs> We also have in the roadmap uh, for uh, this year a lot of new features. Uh, OTLP ingestion, we have been working on that for quite a while. I myself have been working on that. Um, and, um, and also the native histogram support as well. We have a demo for those two, two features on our talk, which is the next slide. Um, we have uh, three things uh, that are important. You can come to the talk that we have tomorrow and learn more about Cortex and, and all the uses, what the users enjoy with Cortex. And also, we're going to do an introduction there. Um, if not, you can come to the booth. We have a booth. Uh, you can come talk to us in the booth. These are the times that you can go there. And if, if you're not in the conference right now, you can go to the CNCF channel, and you can ask questions there. Uh, that's where the users are. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. And. That is that. So thank you all for attending. Um, please check your schedule for which uh, session you want to be in. And enjoy Observability Day. We'll see you back here at the, for the closing. <laughs>